Uh, Luna, what do you think of this matchup? Like, Merfolk or Eldrazi, who do you think's favored? I really have no idea. Well, just looking at the deck list, I feel like the Merfolk list is pretty favored. Brad doesn't have a lot of removal. I think he has Dismember. He also runs four Chalice of the Voids, which doesn't really do anything against Aether Vile and Cavernous Souls. So the combination of all those dead cards plus lack of removal... I mean, Merfolk is more of like a critical mass deck, right? You just like reach a point where you've played so many Merfolks in play that you just start, you know, each individual Merfolk is like a 5-5 five, five or a 6-6. Six, six. And then on top of that, I'm pretty sure he has cards like Spreading Seas and Ways to Turn as Tron Lands into Islands or the Eldrazi Temples into Islands yep. as well. So it's a lot of disruption. I'm definitely thinking Merfolk's favorite here. Yeah, it looks like both players are on a pretty big mulligan here. Nia took down to uh, six and Brad down to five. How are these opening hands looking? So Merfolk, not a lot of action. We see one Lord in Aether Vial in a subtlety. And then on the Brad side, we have some good Eldrazi, but nothing coming down right away. But Tron, it looks like that Urza's Tower off the top could be a big deal because Tron could be assembled here on turn three. Yeah, I think this is a very, oh, wow. Even the ring as well. Yeah. Oof. And the way it's playing out, um, Nikachu doesn't have a way to disrupt these lands, so Brad on turn three is going to be able to Thought Not Seer and Mattery Shaper, and follow up with the ring and have all his mana. This is one of the slower hands for Merfolk, even though he did keep a four land three speller, which seems reasonable. Only two of these are actual threats. Um, the subtlety is kind of nice, though, because it is going to be able to stop the Thought Not Seer, but it's going to put him down on cards, so... Kind of looking like if Merfolk's going to win this game and needs the pressure pretty aggressively, this yeah, Tron is definitely going to start outscaling. Yeah, especially with that one ring draw. There's some hope, especially on the mold of five, that, oh, you assemble Tron, but maybe you don't have much action left over. But with that one ring coming off the top, action's probably not going to be a problem for Brad this game. So what do you think you pitch to this subtlety here? Because the Thought Knots, you pretty much have to subtlety the Thought Knot, right? So you just got to subtlety and pitch a Lord of Atlantis and hope that Sevulin and one Lord get there with the Muta Vault? Yeah, I think so. There's really nothing else that you can do about it because the Thought Knot's going to take a card anyway. So you're kind yeah. of just already pushed into a position where you might as well do it because if you don't, you're just going to lose your card anyways. Um, and especially with the way his hand is played out, if he doesn't try the Thought Knot, he's just going to take the Lord of Atlantis anyways, probably. Yeah. Because with this Botanical Sanctum, can't even cast Subtlety on the next turn. So, oh, Ooh. it looks like Brad's actually thinking about the Ring here. I mean, the power of the ring is uh, is pretty intoxicating. It's hard to pass that up. So Brad yeah. can ring and matter reshaper here still, but can't play the thought not this turn. I think Brad's trying to play around Tide Binder here. I just looked at Nikachu's list and he runs four Tide Binders, and this is a turn where his vials on two and he doesn't have Tide Binder mana up. So getting able to being able to get the ring down immediately, I think, is a good game. I think Nikachu really needs uh, like a Tide Shaper, needs some way to get an island over yeah. there. And maybe the Island Walk with the Muta Vault and Lord of Atlantis can get there. I think that might be what this one comes down. Oh, and there's the Tide oh, wow, Binder you mentioned too. Binder. I was actually wondering if Nikachu is going to upkeep the Vial and just stick it up to three. It looks like he wants to keep it on two. Yeah, so I guess he can, so Nikachu can violin another Lord and then yeah. Tidebinder the One Ring, probably. Yeah. Although that would leave him without a card for subtlety, if that matters this turn. Well, I don't think you're really too worried about holding on to the subtlety right now. Probably more worried about clearing the board with all this dust or something like that, which doesn't really seem like Nikachu could play around something like that. Yeah, there's not much you can do about in all his dust or something coming off the top. Well, uh, you got a tide binder here, right? I would think yeah, to shut yeah, down definitely. the ring. I mean, I, I think Nikachu might be a little concerned if Brad's, excuse me, if Brad's baiting him into committing another creature into play and getting all his dust in. He might feel a bit sad about that. But again, Brad's just going to outscale Merfolk, and Merfolk really just needs to try and end the game as soon as possible. Yeah, the, Brad have more cards here is not going to do him any favors. Yeah, the uncheck, the one ring will just run away with this game, with uh, especially with Tron being assembled. So Brad has all the cards and all the mana, which is a pretty good place to be in Magic. Oh, this is interesting decision point for Nikachu. He could either uh, subtlety this right now, or you can put the Lord out and just allow the subtlety to... Yeah, I think this is probably better. I think you just don't want the body in play. 
Yeah. Yeah, there's no there's no island on Brad's side of the battlefield yet. So a four four yeah. is actually a pretty good blocker at the moment. Although going down the Lord, can the Lord just outscale? Is there any argument to letting this go, putting the Lord into play and hoping you get a third Lord off the top and can just outscale the thought not? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying. There's a lot of different um, possibilities here. I think I lean more towards doing a subtlety because Brad is only going to be working with four mana after this, and there's not a whole lot. Like, what's even the worst case scenario that Brad can do here? Maybe another thought knot or a matter shaper. It looks like Nikachu agrees shaper. with you. There's yeah. the there's a subtlety to uh, at least temporarily take care of the thought knots here. Mm, how much damage does four, six, ten plus three from the mutable? So I mean, is it? Two turn clock, most likely. Yeah. There is a mattery shaper to block. And most notably, the ring has no text right now. So, yes, yeah, that we that tied the tide binder very good here. That was kind of swinging the game, although ether vial, not the <laughs> not the best card off the top on turn five. This is a kind of tricky attack. You don't really want to lose your lord. You get a free attack with the. Uh... The name of the three mana oh, What's her name? Sevulin, I think. Sevulin. Sevulin. Yeah, Sevulin. Get a free attack with that because it's indestructible. But you don't really attack with Lord, and you definitely don't attack with Tidebinder because then you give Brad a lot of draws. Yeah. Wow. Oh, really? He's willing to do wow. here. So, yeah. Nikachu, I. Ooh, that's interesting. That is a Lord off the top that can be vile into play. I don't think that changes the math on the one ring becoming active. But, but that does, it does allow push through more damage. And it also allows the Tide Finder to live. I think that's the biggest oh, thing here. Oh, you're right. That's huge. Keeps the ring oh. turned off. Wow. And I think Brad yeah, is really, really hoping that a Tide Finder is going to die and give him a few more draws to find his out. And this game might be about over. I thought Merfolk were in bad shape with the starting hand because that's that Thought Not Seer. A dismember. Does that do anything? It's going to cost Brad four life. There's no black mana. I don't know if the dismember is yeah. that helpful here. It does technically save on damage because he can kill a lord and takes off all the buffs. However, I think he's probably just gonna have to sack Mindstone here and look for an all his dust. There's probably two in the main out. deck. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's two all his does, and I think that's probably what Brad needs to see here. I he think is, you're right. He also has the option of it actually might give him more up to dismember the tide binder, which allows the ring to be turned on again, and then he can draw two cards. If he has enough mana to dismember and activate ring and sack Mindstone and still cast all his dust, then that yeah. would give him three outs to finding all his dust. Yeah, he that's a good lead on. Yeah, I think he definitely lead on the dismember. Okay. Or Mindstone. He's okay. probably going to have to do both. Yeah, most likely. Ooh, so there's some more mana. So I think Brad yeah. definitely has enough mana to dismember and draw with the ring and steal all his dust. Yeah, but that means you got to have all his dust in the top two cards, or I think that's pretty much the game, right? You just remember, yeah. just remember the tide binder and just knock the top of the deck and hope that the one ring is kind. Yeah, he has a one in 23 and then another one in 23, so roughly about five percent each, which gives him probably around an eight percent chance of finding it, maybe a little bit less than that, but not a whole lot. And you could choose definitely like probably over 90 percent to just kill him next turn. Is the Voldaren Hexcatcher's counter ability combined with the ward from Sevulin, is there any way this is going to tax Brad's mana so much that in all his dust isn't good enough? Because he can sack Merfolk to force spike essentially non creature spells thanks to the, the Hexcatcher. Oh, that's true. I didn't think about that. Yeah, so I hadn't thought about that mana. either. Um, yeah, I'm being a poor life, and with this mutable on play, all this list might actually not even be an out anymore. Plus yeah, I forgot about the well. It's going to take damage. So let's say he actually does find all his dust, activates the ring, he's going to have two counters. You get two, can just put him to two with Mutable, and then kind of the dodge ring. the ring anyways. Yeah. So, well, here's the... Ooh. There's a draw. Nothing yeah. nothing helpful. Two Thought Not Seers. Not going to get the job done here, I don't think. And it looks like game one is about to go to the Merfolk, and Brad scoops yeah. it up. Wow. That was a lot quicker than our game. Oh, did you see that, Brad? Uh, you click draw a card. I don't know how, how do you feel about. I mean, there's actually there's all this us 
that was uh one of was the that the top drops. card oh I think it was the top card of the card after but it was close but yeah oh. where, do you, where do you stand on that do you like to I, click draw a card do you I try to I try to avoid avoid the impulse. I do it sometimes. I but I try not to do it because I feel like it's the risk is it traps you into like bad thinking and like uh, you can only play with the information you have, right? So you got to make the best decision you can with the information you have. So the top card of your deck isn't really relevant because there's no way Brad could have gotten that card. So I do it sometimes for fun, but I I try to avoid it. What about you, Luna? Do, are you a draw a card person to see what you had on top? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I just it's definitely more fun to know although if i'm playing in a real tournament i never look after mulliganing i know some people look i never look if it's a mulligan it's always a mulligan don't care what's on top what do we see in these sideboards luna is there anything that can swing the matchup from uh from either side that you see um so i feel like for nikachu he probably doesn't want to do too many changes merfolk is a deck that highly synergizes with every other merfolk they have in play if you start cutting too many and start trying to disrupt your opponent's game plan then you dilute your deck with too many answers you're not actually to play your primary game plan so i think the yeah. sideboarding is more for brad's side um nikachu does have a couple of spell pierces that he can bring in for all his best i'm pretty sure does brad have oblivion stone I'm not seeing an Oblivion Stone. I'm not seeing an Oblivion Stone. Yeah, it's always tricky to sideboard with a Karn deck because you have the like, right. do I bring in my one copy or trust that my four Karns will find my one copy? So I think we'll see a few changes from Brad, but I think you also lean on Karn a bit. The one that really stands out to me uh, in the Merfolk sideboard is actually the Harbinger of Tide seems pretty good because as you were saying, that's a way you can keep your Merfolk count high, but also get a little more removal and like against four, five, six mana Aldra, the tempo play of like returning the tap creature to its controller's hand is actually pretty strong like that can buy you a lot of time to force through those last few points of damage so i expect we'll see the harbingers which i think we've already seen brought in but other than that i'm not sure there's much for merfolk to do really mm -hmm. Very oh, quick, look, sideboarding. quick sideboarding on to game three and how are these hands looking Merfolk's got a lot of lands. In uh, Tron, we see two Tron pieces. We see four lands all together, two Tron pieces, a ring, and a Thought Knot. The Mind Stone, I guess, does help being on the play. You can get down to Thought Knot or one ring pretty quickly. Is this a keep from the Merfolk side, you think, Luna? Um, I think so. I think it's very close. You have, I think the Mutavault might push it over the edge. If that Mutavault was another island, then maybe you don't have enough pressure. But we have... Two disruption spells. We have a two-drop merfolk, and we also have a Muta Vault. So I think it's I think it's good enough. And the force negation notably can just end the game on the spot. So yeah, but that's an cool. good answer to the one ring, and also the all is dust we've been talking about. Uh, force of negation, very good there. And the tidebinder can shut down the one ring too. So actually, the sand lines up pretty well, I think, with uh, Brad's hand at the moment. Outside of that thought, not seer. Right. Yeah. He has the force negation for the ring. Just needs an answer for your thought not. The Sabulin's a pretty big draw. What was? Uh, oh, the Sabulin. Just to the Merfolk. Oh, yeah. The card advantage that offers is is very powerful for Merfolk. Although it might end up getting thought knotted before it hits the battlefield, depending on uh, what Brad does here. I'm actually curious. Do you slam the thought knot or the one ring? Last game we saw the one ring. If Brad does that again. He's going to get a little bit blown out, I think, because then you can force of negation and then get down the Sevulin. I almost, I feel like he's going to go for the Wondering because he can, well, I guess he can't play around Spell Pierce, but he can play around Tide Binder for a turn. Yep. Although the force of negation, now we have two of them in hand. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be a blowout here if it's the Wondering. I think you gotta, you gotta snip off the counter. I think if you get the option. I feel like leading with Thought Knot might be better just because he can't get Spell Pierce. Very yeah, do likely the Thought Knot oh. resolves, and then you can take the answer for the ring out of the hand. I think uh, that's exactly what Brad's going to do. We see the Thought Knot coming down, going to get a, a little hand check. We're going to see the, the Flash Lord hit the battlefield for Merfolk, and then, hmm, this is a tricky hand. So Yeah, Brad's <laughs> not going to be happy to see Tidebinder and Double Force Negation. Three he knows wondering. his wondering is pretty much not going to do anything this game, which is uh, not a great place to be when you just have two lands in hand outside of the one ring. That does have Tron and a Mind Stone, so he does get two draws next turn. Maybe he can start or playing some of his big spells. Draws them. 
yeah, that's what Brad really needs, I think, is something something massive off the top. Otherwise, the Merfolk are just going to start chipping in. Takes the Sevulin from hand. So I guess just giving up on the One Ring, there's so many answers to it. It's There's no use in trying to protect it. We see another Muta Vault, but Merfolk doesn't really have much pressure yet. This Thought Knot's going to hold down the fort for the time. Oh, boy, another ring. <laughs> Did two rings do anything? That actually might not be the worst thing in the world. First one likely gets Tidebinder. Second one gets Force Negation and Exiling Force Negation. And now Nikachu would have no more spells. Brad just has a bajillion mana with yeah. Mindstone. So. Yeah, and the Thought Knot's big enough to hold back the Muta Vaults for now, so he's not really taking any damage. So maybe that's the way that Eldrazi can, uh, can stabilize here. I think so. He's going to leave with the Mindstone. See what else he can find. Oh, Ooh. a Reality Smasher. That just gets around all of Nikachu's hand. Yeah, that's a that's a clock. <laughs> the Aldrazi are big. Uh, Merfolk, they can scale up, but uh, the Aldrazi are just naturally so big. Brad could just slam the Reality Smasher and hit for nine here. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, I think he wants to lead on the ring first, get out one yep. of Pikachu's answers, and then start smashing. I think you so can... You think... Go ahead. So you think you go Tidebinder for the first ring and then Force on the second one? Is that the, the line you'd take? Yeah, there's not a whole lot that the Tide Binder stops that Force doesn't stop. So I think I'd rather have the extra creature in play. You yeah. might be a little bit worried about this member later on the game, but you saw Force Negation. The problem with just casting a Force Negation here is that it leaves you with no board presence at all. And you're actually just losing a board to a Thought Knot. Yeah, that's that's definitely a concern. We haven't seen many Merfolk at the battlefield. and. Uh... The reality Smasher is currently unknown, but there's a lot of Eldrazi that are coming. So this one ring has to be answered. It'll be interesting. I think I would go with the line you're saying. I think just getting the Tidebinder on the battlefield is pretty important here. Yeah, I think so as well. Pikachu's How also you... seeing all this mana floated, so he has to be a little bit worried about what's to come. Might be double-checking Brad's deck list to see what else he could add. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the the upside of open decklist tournaments. You can kind of do a little peek and see what uh what you might have to play around, what you should be afraid of. What are your feelings on modern Tron, Luna? It's a, one of the most oh, controversial the decks. Are you a, was, uh, are you a Tron fan? <laughs> I'm a big Tron fan. When I was uh, I've been playing Magic forever, but I took a break for a while. And when I first came back to modern, and I was asking all my friends, you know, I didn't have a collection. I was like, does anybody have a deck I can borrow? Eldrazi Tron was actually the deck that one of my friends had. So. It was uh, it was my go-to deck for a few months, and I really enjoyed it. Playing oh, that's... dumb guys on turn three. <laughs> Just want that. Yeah, I do. I do kind of like Eldrazi Tron, the more traditional Tron. Oh, I actually hate the like ramp into Karn style Tron decks, but Eldrazi Tron is kind of cool. Well, we see the line here. There's the One Ring coming down. Here comes the Tidebinder to stifle the One Ring. We see a Mattery Shaper off the top. Oh, Merfolk's going to have to draw something here. These Eldrazi are just going to be too big, I think, this game. I think Brad might just be on the Tate Town plan here. Just this Rally Smasher, even if the Tide Finder trades to the 4-4, four -four, he gets his ring back. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably what I would do. Get down, and here it comes. The Reality Smasher, Hasty 5-5 five -five Trampler, and push with both. Do you trade the Tide Binder? So you get a card from the Thought Knot, but you turn on the One Ring... Unknown about the second one ring at the moment. Nikachu does not know that Brad do a second one, so I guess there's an impulse to keep the Tidebinder on the battlefield for now. I think you have to go with this line. If you just trade here, what pressure are you left with? Yeah, it looks like it's a race. I mean, Murpho can get in for, what, 10-ish here? 11 with the Muta Vault? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. And yeah, right the now... Master is a really nice draw. Yeah, because Brad can only hit for nine. So on board, <laughs> he can put Nikachu down to one. And that's just a land off the top. Well, he does have the one have... ring for the extra protection, but Nikachu has the double force. So it might yeah. just be... Brad might have to just play Mattery Shaper and pass now. Or at least probably plays the one ring just to get out the force negation. And then he the defensive... Eldrazi plan, staying back on defense to do some blocking. And here comes, yeah, exactly. The one ring, force pitching force to deal with the second one ring. And then all Brad has left at the moment is a matter reshaper. And then I don't think, can you attack at all? Can you get him with like the reality smasher and still block enough to stay alive? 
I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. I don't think Brad's game plan here is to try and race anymore. I think his game plan is to just find an all is dust at this point and stay alive. <laughs> yeah. There were no more all is dust in the sideboards, right? So it's just the two that Brad's going to be looking for. Yep. Subtlety off the top. So that doesn't stop in all is dust, but it would stop in Eldrazi. We're kind and of we're... a stalemate right now. <laughs> yeah, Neither player's gonna... attacking. I yeah, expect reached... to see the EOT subtlety here, though. It's a flying threat. No like, Brad's at nine. You can get in for three a turn with the subtlety. Like, that's something that the Eldrazi can't currently block. I think Nikachu actually is lethal. I don't know if he with wants double to... double Mutavolt. Ooh, yeah. not going to go for it. Okay, just going to chip in this turn with the subtlety. I guess there could be yeah, a risk actually... of a dismember or something. Or... Dismember. So Brad's going to be dropping down to nine. And I think we're at the all is dust or bust part of this game. Unless there's something else in Brad's deck list that I'm... A worm coil doesn't do it. Cityscape leveler. I think it's pretty much got to be... Oh, okay, oh, well, oh. a one ring does does do it for a turn, at we'll least. Start that the is, chain. Ring yeah, into ring. Ring into ring, and the ring's still not going to do anything, but it will give protection for a turn, which at this point is a pretty big deal for Brad. Well, he resets, right? He just picks the one that is fresh. I, I believe Tidebinder says, like, cards with this name, but I should... Let me double-check the wording on it. Well, it's like he can inactivate it. And he found Cityscape Leveler. Okay. So he can kill a subtlety, which is nice. Oh. Oh, that's... Yeah, you're, you are correct about Tidebinder. So there's a Cityscape. Is this swinging back in Eldrazi's favor now? Um, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. He has two a... more... Mm-hmm. That's a big body hitting the battlefield and a removal spell blowing up the Lord. Wow. Is this Brad enough for kind of... Brad to go sorry, offense? Go oh, so, I'm sorry. Is it enough for Brad to go offense here? Are we still sitting back, you think, Luna? Yeah, I think it is enough. He has a ring protection. There's kind of no reason not to, unless Brad feels like these blocks aren't good. Pikachu can animate double Muta Vault, double block the Reality Smasher. Block Tidebinder in 4-3. Or, sorry, in 4-4. Four, four. So, Nikachu has pretty good blocks. I don't know if Brad wants to attack. I guess ne next turn he'll have the 8-8 eight, eight Cityscape leveler. Okay, gonna get in. Gonna get in with the Mattery Shaper to try to draw a card, maybe? Send the send in the 3-2 just on the off chance that you get to cycle it? Yeah, I mean, there's really no good blocks if he just attacks with just a 3-3. Three, three. You talk with Smasher, you trade the Mute Evolve. If you talk with Thought Knot, you give a card back. You talk with Tree Shaper, you either get three damage or you kill a guy and draw a card. So it seems like a good attack. Ooh, so what does Merfolk do to get out of this position? Because we've three. definitely swung back. Yeah, so Merfolk takes a three, but what can they? What can really be drawn here to swing this? Because it feels like it's really swung in Brad's favor mm. at this point. I think Nikachu brought in a Pick Your Poison. But there's a cityscape leveler, so even if he picks your poison naming artifact, you can just suck cityscape. I don't think there's anything else. Yeah. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, Merfolk doesn't have a lot of ways of getting out of tough situations like this. There's there's no Merfolk all is dust yet. <laughs> Someday, maybe, but... Well, there's the maybe. trade. We'll see what this Mattery Shaper spins into, which is just another land, so that's fine. Well, this is a big top deck. If Oh, if Merfolk are going to pull together, it's going to have to be this turn, I think, or that Cityscape leveler is going to be a big trampling issue. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's not really looking too good. Here we go. Oh, and oh, oh. Lord of Atlantis, but again, no island. This is one of those, it makes me wonder, and I know Merfolk so much worse than Nikachu. It, I remember the days, though, when there used to be a ton of spreading seas in Merfolk, and now there's, like, one in the sideboard and, like, some tie Shapers in the main deck. This is one of those board states where giving your opponent an island would be really huge, like, just game-ending. Yeah, I mean, Nikachu, I don't know if he was joking when he said he's going to try and bring Merfolk every week. He might be saving the spreading <laughs> seas for week two. That is very yeah. I don't know if he's actually joking. I think he might actually just have enough different Merfolk decks somehow to uh, to bring one every week. 
Yeah, I think so too. I think he's just saving the spreading seas. So here's the ring. Oh, and a worm oh, coil gosh. too. And that, oh boy. The big stuff has come off the top at the right time for Red Nelson. The ring's going to draw, but this one is looking kind of over-ish to me with this worm coil also coming down. Brad have any value lands you can search for expedition like Blossom or anything? Uh, let's look at Brad's mana base. Uh, like uh, yeah, no, it's all Tron lands at Gemstone Caverns and B6 and Eldrazi Temple, so nothing spicy. I was surprised sack expedition map first, try and thin out the deck. He already has yeah. much mana to cast whatever he wants. Yeah, it seems. Yeah, I don't know what Brad's thinking on that one. I don't know if he's worried about like a spreading seas effect shutting down Tron and trying to like wait to see what Tron Lane he tutors up. But if you get another mine, you have redundancy on each Tron Lane anyway. So, well, yeah, here comes I think the all Brad. I think all Brad needs to do is just kill the Lord of Atlantis, prevent a Tide Shaper top deck, which would give his team unblockable. Probably just figuring out how to attack to not die. So this is going to force some, if both of these creatures come in, this will, oh, and Brad might push with everything here. Definitely going to force some blocks. So Nikachu's at 10. He has 13 trampling power and a 4-4 thought knot. Definitely going to require some blocking. There is the Muta Vault down there. And the Power Stone can activate Muta Vault, so <laughs> actually getting some Power Stone value somehow. True. So he needs to put, so the Lord's almost certainly going to die, which means he needs to put four toughness in front of the tramplers. And then he also has to chump block the thought knot as well. I think Nikachu is going to just lose his entire board here. And we're just going to go to game three. That's, yeah. With just a mutable yeah, left over, that's just, not really enough. Brad's probably just trying to figure out if there's any instant speed threats that Nikachu can have. Which, looking at the deck list, I don't really see any. I think maybe the sideboard, he uh, might be thinking about the sideboard Harbinger of Tides that could flash in to bounce something, but I don't think there's yeah. enough mana to cast it with flash at the moment. So I'm not sure what Merfolk could actually have to uh, interact with it. So the Cityscape lever blows up the subtlety. and Yeah, I guess that makes sense as well. Because he would just die to that in the ring. That would give Tide Shaper. So Nikachu needs to block to give himself Tide Shaper top deck. If that's possible. Yeah, I think that's got to be the, the game plan. Nikaju's got to block in a way where if he top decks a Tide Shaper and gets an island, it's lethal. Can he do that, though? That means keeping the Lord of Atlantis, keeping at least one other creature. How much ring damage do we have? Three ring damage? Okay. I mean, I guess a Tide Shaper that's top two. deck could... A Tide Shaper top deck could be relevant still. So here comes the blocks. Only one of his creatures is going to die. Yeah, so Tide Shaper should be, should still be a, a lethal top deck here, I think. Yeah. Even with the Worm Coil coming down, doesn't matter if Island Walk is in play. So, yep, Tide Binder down. Muta Vault lives. Nikachu drops to two. Here comes the Worm Coil, and I think it's Tide Shaper bust from the Merfolk side. Huge top deck. To decide right. if this is the match or we're going to a game three. Here's the map sacking. Oh, Ursa Saga. Yeah, Brad's just trying to on his deck for the last turn. And oh, okay, redraw, redraw. That's a waterlogged grove. Can sack that to to get one more look at a tide shaper. Yeah, and he has enough mana with the power stone as well. Here we go. The game decide. Oh, subtlety. Doesn't look and, like it's enough. Yeah, especially now the worm coil. Even if Nikaju can block in a way to stay alive, uh, Brad's going to gain a bunch of life with the worm coil, and I think it's it's probably probably time for a concession here. We'll see. Yeah, Nikaju will probably force Brad to make awkward. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and there we go. Fair. On to game number three. This has been a very close match. Oh, we see some. Play draw sideboarding going on for Merfolk, but some one drops that went out coming back in, two drops going out, trying to be a little more aggressive, maybe, but being on the play here. Yeah, being on the play probably just wants to go with the super proactive game plan. You only really need like one counter spell for the ring. 
because Marfo can kill on turn four. Yeah, and Eldrazi doesn't have like a ton of great targets outside. I guess the the mythical always does that we always talk about, but never see. And then the one ring, there's not a not a ton to spend like a spell pierce on, really. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Brad's changing anything. I don't think I've seen him change anything, but that's kind of the power of a Karn sideboard, I guess, is you have access to all your sideboard cards in game one. Yep, looks like you're both ready. Here we go. On to the deciding game three. Who's going to pick up the win here? Merfolk or Eldrazi? And there's the Tide Shaper. Ooh. This looks like two pretty good hands. We have the Tide Shaper with a bunch of action from Merfolk. Two Tron lands, Walking Bliss and Reality Smasher, and some ramp from uh, from Brad in that sneaky dismember, which is pretty relevant against Merfolk. I would think these are both keeps. What do you what are you thinking about these hands, Luna? Yeah, Brad also has the Gemstone Cavern on the draw, which is nice because he can play with the Mindstone. They're definitely both keeps. The question is, what does Brad exile with the Gemstone? That's that's a tough one. All of his cards are pretty good here. Yeah. It might be a reality smasher. It looks like Let's... Red's hovering the reality smasher. I think you might be right. Yep. The reality smasher down, but starting with an extra mana is, is pretty huge here. And oh. there is the all is dust. Oh my goodness. That's a card we have not seen in game one or game two, but we've talked about every game. The get out of jail free card for the Aldrazi deck, and it might come into play this time. Yeah, and Murfolk doesn't have a lot of pressure right now either they're kind of a slow hand no one drop yeah it's kind of a disruptive hand right you have the hex catcher that can be a counter you can deal with a tron land with tide shaper you got the tide binder but not a fast clock really so here comes the tide shaper i assume just gonna snipe urza's tower so mm -hmm. uh, island walk will be on for the time being although there is a walking ballista that is going to be able to answer this if uh, if necessary and a dismember yeah, Brad has a lot of answers. Yeah, it's almost a control hand from the Eldrazi deck over there at the moment. Mm hmm. See what he draws. He's going to EOT dismember. That makes just, sense. He just wants to untap and blista for two. Yeah, and there's a there's a risk, I guess, of like the hex catcher in the future being a problem if you're trying to dismember. Oh, oh, oh my boy. god. That is a one okay. ring off the top, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be slammed here. Yeah, almost definitely. There's no yeah. tie binder man out. So there, draws. So there is a tie binder for next turn, but you get at least one draw off of it. Pithing Needle. So what do you think the Pithing Needle is for, Luna? Is that for naming like Ether Vial and Mutavault mostly? Yeah, exactly. Like turns off the man land, trades one for one. It's pretty reasonable. Turns off file. Like it's just, it's a one for one. There's enough stuff to counter. Makes oh sense. wow. This thought knot is actually a huge draw because it's gonna protect the ring, I think. Mm-hmm. Cause this can take the tide binder, and then the ring is just set to keep doing its thing. That is a that is a huge draw. And wow. if Nikachu subtleties it, Brad can just pass the turn, just EOT on Nikachu's turn, the ring around tide binder so nikachu floats three mana essentially oh yeah this is this is tough if you settle to it too you're getting to that point where we're on what turn three here heading towards turn four and there's not a merfolk on the battlefield like merfolk is not there's just no pressure going at the moment and having to exile a card to subtlety might be necessary but that's even less pressure you're gonna have and Eldrazi is going to win the late game in this matchup, like I, most of the time. So uh, it's, it seems like a tough position for the Merfolk deck. Yeah, and Brad already has two out of three Tron lands as well. So it's going to be able to scale really fast. Like Nikachu doesn't really have a good play here. He can let Thought Nars off. If that happens, Brad takes yeah. Tidebinder, activates Ring. If Nikachu goes for Subtlety, Exile, Harbinger, keeps Tidebinder in hand, Brad just passes a turn, makes Nikachu float three mana, and then goes EOT, Ring. Then Nikachu a Tide Binder, then Brad just untaps Bliss to kill the Tide Binder, and then just gets ring back anyways. So I would almost say it's like not close to a checkmate position. I think the only way Brad could get punished here is if he main phases activates the ring, because maybe it is turn three and Brad hasn't played a land yet because that Gemstone Cavern was exiled. 
So if Brad wants to get greedy and activate the ring, he does open up the window and get Tidebinder. But Brad's a really mm. good player. Probably just going to pass the turn here. Yeah, he's, uh, we. I mean, open deck list. Plus, we've seen a bunch of Tidebinders. So I think Brad's definitely in tune with the possibility. I imagine oh. it's not. He's oh, gonna, wow. He's going to Tidebinder the Evoke. Oh, so I didn't even think about I love that. It. I didn't think of that either. And that, That's I a mean, really nice play, actually. I love that's that. That's why... Nika choose the Merfolk Master. All the Holy. all the sneaky lines. Oh my god! Oh, that's that so amazing. good. That yeah, might so be the now best thing I've seen all day, to be honest. Now there's six power on the battlefield. Brad's at fifteen. Well, now he has the Merfolk and Immutable attack, so he can push the edge. Oh my god! Oh, that play is play actually so sick. If and he didn't make that Lord. play, he was almost certainly like losing this wow, game. Now Nika choose probably winning this game. What a amazing. play! Oh my goodness. Yeah, that, that was a line I did not even see because now you can drop the Lord, play up the Munivolt, hit for a ton of damage, and then Brad's kind of back to the all his dust, like needing to hit a Tron land for all his dust, maybe yeah, to get exactly. out from under this. So it's Munivolt. But if he hits all his dust, he can need all the Munivolt. So, wow, what a, what a play. Wow. That's actually amazing. I did not see that. I did not even think about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> no me either so here comes the master of the pearl trident and then you gotta you gotta just fire up the Munival, right yeah get in yeah, there for, hit sure. for as much as you can and that is a big attack brad gonna be dropping down to five plus the ring down to three that means the ring is lethal next turn too brad might need a ring here to legend roll away his ring and get protection for a turn yeah brad needs tron land and ring it's trolley and and ring he can win but he kind of needs both yeah he really does he's a oh boy three cards you can see three cards with the ring i guess you could crack the mind stone although that makes for some issues with mana potentially because there still is also that muta vault so even if you wall is dust you're still at least taking two from the muta vault if you can't also needle yep Getting right down to four also just shuts off this member pretty All much. Right, here we go. Does he draw it? He draws power yeah. plant. There is Tron. But how does but he not die to the ring now? The rings at three. It is colorless, not going to go away with all his dust. And I think that Brad can answer the Merfolk board, but not his own one. I mean, that's the power of the ring, right? You get all these cards, but every once in a while, there is a cost to it. And Brad might be experiencing that cost right now. Brad have any instant speed way to gain life? Probably not playing Tron, right? Yeah, I, not that I see in his deck list. He does have the Karn. Can the Karn do anything? Is there, there is a ring in the sideboard. Oh, wait. There's a ring in the sideboard. Yeah. So, you, so Karn can get, get a ring Karn. from the sideboard. Mm -hmm. The legend rule the ring, and that will set up all his dust next turn, plus Pithing Needle. Yep. So actually, this game's not over yet because of the power of Karn here. Yeah, and he can even play the Mind Stone, too. Looks like that's what he's going to do. Yeah, Mind Stone, Karn, Ring, and then untap all his dust needle. And you're just chilling. And there's still a Cityscape Leveler in hand to come down. There may be another Karn activation, although the Muta Vault might have to go there. Well, here comes the Karn. It has to get the Ring. That's the only only card that can... S oh, oh, or a Metamorph. Okay. Or a Metamorph with blue the mana ring. from the Gemstone Caverns. <laughs> oh, he's just gonna... Okay, he's gonna Needle, too. All right, so pays life for the Metamorph to copy the Ring, and then must be planning on Needling off the Gemstone Caverns mana. Seems risky, but maybe not... Well, oh, there's the needle. I imagine this is naming Mutaval. Yeah, not a huge difference going from one or three HP. Yeah, it's it's pretty similar. Well, let's see what the Murpho can draw here. There's a hex catcher, which ooh boy, I think there's too much mana on the trod side of the battlefield for that to really be effective. Mm-hmm. And even stopping sure. all of dust. Nika, do you have a way to blow up the needle? Uh, so we know there's pick your poison, but I guess there's many artifacts over there. Yeah, doesn't do uh, it. I don't think so. And this might be game for Tron. Wow. Tron, I mean, cosplaying as a control deck. 
pretty pretty much i mean so brad still has to close out the game he is at one life it takes <laughs> any amount of damage for merfolk to take this but this all is dust is going to be really brutal especially combined with the pithy needle and i just don't see a way to get the pithy needle off the battlefield that would be that would be the game swinging play to turn the muta vaults back on is there any way oh he there is a flash lord in hand brad's yeah. at one so Brad he does need to have a blister. blocker. Yeah, he needs a blocker along with all his dust, but there are plenty in hand. So here's all his dust. Gets rid of all the merfolk. Wow, this has been a great game. It was very back and forth. It has. Anytime a player wins at one life, it's great. So there's all his dust. I don't think... So you could play the Lord, sack four merfolk, but then you kind of all his dust yourself anyway. So I don't think the Hexcasher comes out here to do anything. Yeah, Brad has five mana. Yeah, doesn't change any math. And then I guess you just Ballista, run out of Ballista to have some sort of blocker and and then just go for You got Cityscape level over the next turn and go from there. So what yeah. can what can Nikachu draw? Is there anything left in the deck? It might be it might be subtlety. Like an end of turn subtlety would be a way you could maybe sneak in over like a cityscape leveler and a blist on too. Yeah, but even then you can buff up the ballista. Yeah. In order to kill a subtlety. So it might just be over. Yeah, I'm not sure what he can draw. That's feel a little stuff. over. But Nikachu has at least a few turns. He's at 18. Yep. It speeds up once a Cityscape leveler comes down. So probably three-ish turns. But, well, let's see what's off the top here. And Lord of Atlantis. Mm. Not great in the face of that Ballista. No, it is not. I think, I mean, I guess you have to run it out. Because what else are you doing? But... Yeah, I mean, there's a bliss, and there's also the cityscape leveler, so there's no way this lord's actually going to survive. Mm -hmm. Brad, uh, maybe Brad accidentally activates the one ring. That would that could be a way. <laughs> this is Moto. You can misclick. Yeah, it is TGO. possible. Yeah, <laughs> it's possible. That's another card, though, and I imagine that's got to be that's got to be very bad news for nikachu there uh best card from your sideboard usually pretty pretty good in most situations i don't even know what brad will tutor up here like i guess you could get an ensnaring bridge i don't even know if you need that at this point because you're going to be the one that's hacking here cityscape leveler liquid metal coating to start attacking the lands but here comes a cityscape leveler You're gonna blow up the lord of atlantis there's a power stone but uh not looking great for the merfolk Brad could also just plus Karn and make his ring a creature. <laughs> Get in there. That's true. It yeah. is indestructible. Yeah, force through some more damage. I guess it can it's... also just snipe the Power Stone. I don't know how much that actually matters, but... I'm just and, not going to oh, play it. Yeah, I'm not just... even going to play it. Have the Ballista. Ugh. Another Lord of Atlantis would have been very good earlier in this game, but a little late for the Lord here. The Cityscape leveler triggers on attack, too. So did you even run it out? Like, you know, it's just going to get blown up. There's nothing. Oh, it's, a, it's a tough position here for the Merfolk, I think. Well, I think he might just be dead. He doesn't play it or some sort of chump blocker. Brad can EOT make Ballista 4-4. Four, four. Untap, make he has 8-12, make uh three more counters so put up to seven hit nikachu for 15 and then ballista yeah so, this might just be game yeah. i guess so nikachu can flash in the hex catcher to try to block after the cityscape leveler triggers but then the ballista just snipes it so i think this yeah. this looks like lethal to me yeah it's lethal i'm pretty sure brad there's might, a counter on the ballista maybe brad plays around harbinger or something because he's afraid something uh, uh, i guess harbinger oh another all is does too yeah i guess harbinger is a card that brad's probably expecting to be sideboarded in it's gotta he be is a one he, he doesn't want to die he does not want to die it, well, he's just gonna go for it here they come cityscape leveler getting in with the ballista and brad's just double checking yeah i don't even think there's 
Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna make a power give himself stone. some okay. extra mana. Yeah, that's that's cute. Aldrazi can take advantage of of power stones to some extent. Pikachu's not even blocking. Maybe I think Pikachu needs to bluff the Harbinger right now. Yeah. Make Brad a little concerned. Yeah, he's got to make Brad worried about dumping all of his mana into the Ballista, right? Like, that's yeah. the way he can maybe stay alive for a turn, is if Brad's just too afraid to, yeah. to actually max pump. But but even then, Ballista just kills a Harbinger. So Yeah, it's... <sighs> Brad's pretty yeah. safe to at least buff two times, I think, is all he needs for lethal. Uh, yeah, I think so. Well, all right. Well, so I guess... Five. He goes to five, but he can still pump Ballista to lethal at any time, right? Let's see. Three, four. Yeah, he has enough. Okay, he's just going to pass his turn. Force Pikachu yeah, I... to do something. Okay, so here comes the, the Hex Catcher. And now this means there's not enough mana for a Tide Shaper. So Brad's going to yeah. pump in that. Right, that there we go. The end of the game.